Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike O'Brien and in this video I will show you everything you need to know to build your first website using GoDaddy's Website Builder. And so when you're starting a website, it can be really intimidating if you don't know what you're doing. There's so many different ways to do it out there, different platforms. You might think there's coding involved. And honestly, the good thing is, is if you watch this tutorial, you'll see everything you need to know to build a professional website in really a matter of hours. So GoDaddy's Website Builder makes it very easy to build a professional website if you have no experience at all, you won't need to do any coding, and overall, it's just a really nice, easy experience when you're trying to build a website. And so these websites could really be for anything. If you're trying to make one for a wedding or a business, if you're trying to gain leads for a consulting firm, maybe if you're trying to just have you know an online portfolio, you're an artist, you're trying to do a project or school, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. I will walk you through step by step everything you need to know as a beginner. So I like to use Google Chrome because they have some nice extensions when you're using your website in the long term, some different little marketing tools on there. But for building a website, it doesn't actually matter which browser you use. So what you have to do first is go down to the top of the description of this video. I'll have a link right there copy that link and paste it in a new tab on your browser so that we're all starting at the same place. And so it should look something like this. You will have to create an account. So let's just do that right now. I'm going to say Mike at Santral.com, centralmedia.com. Okay, then we're ready to go. And let's just create our account now. So then you're going to have a couple questions here. So first one, what category are you in? I recommend choosing one as close to your actual category as possible. So if I'm looking to make one that is a photography, you know, maybe I'm trying to make a portfolio, this would also maybe apply for like a wedding website as well. So let's go and do this first. You can also obviously type it in. And then what do we want to call our website? Let's just say uh, Mike O'Brien Photography. So we're going to do that right there. We're going to say next. And it's pretty much already setting up our website, as you can see in the background right there. Now, one thing about GoDaddy is if you don't like the theme that they chose for you, they really choose them based on what you say you're doing. So photography is pretty much going to look like this. And I mean, I'll get into that later, but you can always choose a different one from the beginning. If you're like, wow, I really don't like this one. You could just restart and choose a different category. Um, but we can also rearrange this. I'll show you everything, obviously everything you need to know about this to make this actually look like a better website than it currently does. So looking over on the right side, uh, let's just go through things one at a time. So on the top right, you can preview it and this will show you what your website would look like if you actually visit it. Uh, so then we can go up there and edit the site or we can publish, but you'll notice that Something interesting here, they have the regular desktop site on the left and then they have the mobile on the right. So definitely look at both of those at all times. If you're making a serious website, just remember guys that a lot of your traffic is going to be on mobile. People always forget this when you're building a site because most people build sites on a laptop or a desktop and so they kind of forget that a lot of the viewers are going to be on a phone. And in reality, I mean, probably something like 60% of you are going to be even watching this video on a phone. So it's just the fact of, you know, that's the way it is these days, 2020, 2021. And as we go forward, more and more people are using their phones to browse the internet and watch videos and go to websites. So let's go back to edit site right there. And of course, the other button that you saw is publish. And so currently this website is not published. We will publish it later on and I'll show you that in a minute, but you'll see that this is the domain they gave us first and it's just uh, whatever the name is, .godaddysites.com. We can get a free domain if you get like a plan through GoDaddy. So we will have to upgrade this. And again, we'll touch on that in a minute. So going down the right side then, first we have my site. If we click on the name right there, it brings you into some basic information settings here. So you can change your site name if you want. You can change your business category. You can change your email. You can change your address if you want to add an address right there. And you can add a phone number as well. So not really that much in this right here. But if we go back to settings, so right at the top you click back one, uh, you can actually go down. We can get into settings a little bit later because settings is down there. But going down the right side in order here, we have the theme. So we can go in and edit this theme right here. And so the first thing, you can try a new look. So remember before I said you could restart the whole process if you wanted to, or you can just change the theme right here. There's lots of other looks you can choose from. Um, and so there's you know lots of different themes. They're loading right here. But as you scroll down, you'll see that they have some sample stock footage right there, um, you know, whatever images they, they have. Obviously, we're going to change all of those. They don't matter. So kind of ignore those and picture what yours would look like there and just look at the overall structure of it. So if we say, um, you know, this one, the one they're using it looks pretty nice, pretty modern, I guess. That's not a bad one. Let's, let's use this one. 
Okay, so we have this new theme here. I think this one looks pretty good. Honestly, when you're looking at it, it has, uh, you know, on the top left, you have your logo or your name right there. Uh, we have the menu on the top right, then we have some large text, uh, a nice picture in the background, and then we have a button, some kind of call to action right there. For most people, this is actually a really good layout. It's a very popular one that a lot of websites use. But of course, dig through these guys, find one that's right for you. There's so many different themes out there that it should be very easy to find one that should fit your needs very well. So once you find your theme, the next thing to do is to really kind of optimize the theme because sometimes the themes are not the same color as your business. If it's a business and you have a logo, you probably want the theme to kind of match your business theme. So you can go down here and choose some different colors. So maybe I want everything to be blue and you'll see that suddenly all the text and all the little boxes are blue and it's just nice to follow that theme. And if you have a specific logo, you can have right down here if you want to have the HTML color code for it. What I typically do is if you just go on Google and type in HTML color code identifier, there's usually some kind of tool that you can like upload your logo and find out exactly what the color is in your logo and then make it an exact match rather than trying to guess and get a color close to your logo. Just get the exact one and it generally looks better that way. Then if we go to fonts right here, you can choose some really nice font pairings. So typically with websites, we go with pairings. So you have the, you know, the headlines are some type of text and then the body below it is a different text. It just looks nicer. And so you can go through here and see what to, what combos we have. So if we want like ca cabin, uh, we want chunk five, that, that's like a real funky one right there. You've got a lot of different ones here and some of them will have uh, better load speeds than others. So if you're trying to rank higher on Google, you may want to be choosing one that makes more sense. You can also choose the font size. Of course, with this here, I think this is a pretty standard font size and I think it looks pretty good. This may also be a good opportunity for you to look at the general structure of this. So as we scroll up and down here, you'll see that you can, you see the little plus thing right there. It says add section. So the way this is laid out is in sections right here. So we have the top section right there is just a picture with whatever text on front. Then we have our whole about section right here highlighted as one entire section. We can move these around if we want. So on the right there, you have some little things. So you can move the section down, you can move the section up. Uh, we can't move this up because that's the header right there. So we can move it down. If we move this about section down, it puts that one above it. Then we can also go to the layout here and change this section if we want to. Um, we can go and change the color of it. And then of course we could delete the section. Now, if you look at the little plus icon between two sections, you can add another section right there. Um, and so we'll get into that in just one second. Actually, I might as well just do that now. So you have some different, you have a lot of different section concepts here. So as you can see, it's almost hard to, you know, sift through this, but you should have, a, you know, there's a search bar at the top. If you know, if you have an intent and you know what you want to do, you can search for it and you're probably going to find a pretty good idea right there. But if you want to say, Hey, I want a photo gallery right here. They have lots and lots of different options for what a, a section would look like if it was a photo gallery. So you can go down here. And if I say like, yeah, none of these really are looking that great to me. Maybe instead we don't want a photo gallery right there. Maybe instead I want some kind of, uh, Maybe I want a blog. I want to have blog right there. And then you can see and there's maybe this one looks great. I like this one. Let's do that. And it's going to have kind of a carousel style showing your blogs and you can add that. And again, move it up and down wherever we want. So as you go down here, you'll see that we do have my blog right there. And of course you have to start writing in order to have your blog show anything right there. And so no blog post yet, but we'll get into that later on in the video. So with that being said, we now have, let's go back to home. It automatically brought us, brought us into the blog setting right there. Um, but that was our theme section right there. Now, if we go down to pages and sections, this is where we also see all of the different sections right here. And so I showed you where you can move them up and down from the up and the down arrow right there. Actually, it's probably easier to see here when we're a little more zoomed in. So you can move them around like that or on the right side. So if we go from home into the sections right here, we can go and move these around. So we can click and drag on the little two bars right there and drag them around and rearrange them to pretty much wherever you want in this order right here. Uh, so you can drag and reorder them. Then of course you can add sections from here as well. And maybe that's easier for you rather than adding it in between. I always just like to click on the in between and add it there. So we can also manage pages because we do have multiple pages on a website and you'll see them across the top. So if we go up to the top right here, you'll see home gallery and contact. So we can add pages, we can manage the pages. So let's go into manage pages here. 
And again, you'll see you can rearrange these as well. So you can say, maybe I want contact us above gallery and it'll rearrange where they are right there, as you can see up there. Um, if we don't like that page, we can go and we can go and uh, delete the page, we can duplicate the page, we can go into page settings, or we could manage the content. So let's start with page settings right here. You can go and show it in the navigation bar or not. So if you have some pages that maybe you want to just link to through text or through images or through buttons, but you don't necessarily want them to be up in the navigation bar on the top. You can easily just disable that right here. You can instead show it in the footer. You can make it a private page um, and you can rename the page as well. So that's what you would be doing right there. But if we go back to site navigation, so we go back up one step to where we were, you can also go and manage the content for different pages. And it brings us into uh, this look right here, which is the same thing we were looking at before, but this is just for a different page. So we can go to home uh, and we can go down and check out what home has. Sometimes it is a little bit laggy, I noticed, like I have really fast internet, but you can still see that sometimes when you're switching between pages, it just takes a, a few seconds to get there. So, so far, we've covered a lot of information and I don't want to lose you guys. So just to reiterate, we've gone through choosing a template and then now this is the whole navigation section. You want to make sure that you have the right layout for each page and you want to have as many pages as you need. So let's just say we want to add a new page. Let's walk through an example here. So we go from actually let's start from home right here. If you want to add a new page, you go to pages and sections, you go to manage pages up there and then you click on add. And this new page, you can have, there's lots of options. You could link to an external website. You can have a drop down menu. Let's just gonna say, we're gonna obviously make a new page right here. And let's call this one about us. That's a pretty common thing for a lot of websites. And we wanna show it in our navigation at the top. So let's create this page. And it should bring us right there. And then if we click, uh, it should automatically bring us to editing this page. But if it didn't, you could just click right here and go to manage content and it will bring you over to the page right here. And now you'll see that it is totally empty. So the next thing you'd wanna do, as I showed you a few minutes ago, is go to add section. You can add as many sections as you need to. So if we just go down, let's just have uh, maybe this one right here and just kind of arbitrarily choose a few, throw them in here for you guys so you can see what they look like. This is obviously a menu. Uh, being a photography website, I don't think we're gonna have a menu uh, unless you're like a photography restaurant or something, I don't know. Uh, we can also have subscribe right there. Maybe we want to have people sign up for like an email list. That's a really nice thing to have. Um, and let's check out what other sections we can actually add to this. So here, like I said, subscribe is a cool one and we can customize this. I'll get into these later on and show you how to customize them. But again, just looking at the macro right here, the big picture, um, you can go down and have content, you can have photo gallery, you can have about is going to be kind of text type stuff. A blog is going to be uh, obviously a collection of different articles and each one is essentially its own page that would be linked from whatever your little blog banner is right there. Uh, the menu, we already saw that if you're a restaurant, an online store is nice, calendar, a video, audio, self-explanatory, PayPal button, that's a nice one if you're trying to, I mean, it could really be anything, uh, especially if it's like a donation type thing, campaign, maybe PayPal would be good right there. Uh, you can have files, a PDF viewer, like really, really a long list of things here. So we also have reservations. If you are a website, it's, you can reserve a table right there. And admittedly, this is done with open table. So you're not always, there may be other ones out there that you don't have on here. Um, and that doesn't mean you can't necessarily get them on here, but it's just not integrated really smoothly like open table is right there. We can have featured categories uh, and just real estate listings. They really make it um, pretty easy to find what you're looking for here. I know I said there's a lot of options, but so in, in a way that is actually good because you could say, oh, I, I just care about photos. You can easily find ones that are related to photos um, and you can find like if you're real estate, that's really convenient because it's already listed right there as real estate. Online ordering, so you can see how powerful this actually is right here. Um, of course, this uses Chow Now, so they show you what it's actually powered by. If you don't have Chow Now, you would, if you got this, you would want to have an account with them as well. Uh, privacy policy, maybe if you want to add that in there, or some reviews. That's nice, you can have reviews on here as well, but again, it's going to be powered from uh, external sites right there. And then of course, Zillow reviews if you're looking for like real estate listings as well. So recommended is gonna be what they show you based on what category you said you were. That's why we chose a category in the beginning, not just for the, I mean, it was also partially to choose the right theme there, but they can suggest because we said photography, maybe we care about a photo gallery or a blog. That's something that maybe photographers really care about more, more often than they care about like Zillow listings.
So going back to home, you'll see that as we add more sections that kind of do different things, some more actionable sections. So instead of just a photo gallery and some text, having like a blog and having appointments, you get some more things on the right side there. So adding a blog means that you can go into blog and actually manage this. And it brings you into another menu within GoDaddy here where we can go and manage our posts. So we can create a new post. You can look at comments. You can look at social. You can look at subscription. If people are signing up for an email list, but let's just go very briefly through what it'd be like if you made a post. So if you just click on post, you can see that you can type your title right there. So new blog, uh, and you're limited to how many characters you have in the title, of course. And then right here, you can click the little plus and you can add, it's a pretty easy way to go through this. You can have a divider right there. Um, you can just start typing text right there. If you click plus uh, right there, you can add like an image. Of course, you're gonna have to upload images. You can find some stock media, go to social media. For this video, I'm just gonna use stock media right here. So let's just insert this photo right there. And then maybe below that, we want to, uh, I don't know, add something else. Let's add maybe a video right there. And again, um, well, okay, we have to republish the entire site. So we're not, we're not gonna do that right now. Um, so that would be how you make a blog post though. There's our new blog, it's a draft right there. And then if you click the three dots, you can either edit the post or you can delete the post. So let's go into edit right now. Um, and you'll see that we can actually have a, a we're not going to add, we're not going to add a video right now. Let's get rid of that. But you'll see that you can actually do some things with the image right here. So you can, you can link the image to something you can have, uh, you can describe the image that's going to be for SEO search engine optimization purposes. So, you know, you might want to just throw some keywords in there. Um, maybe a little caption on the image. If you want, you can change the size of it. You can do, you know, some basic editing with your photo right there. And then of course, when we go back to text, if we go and start writing some text right here, um, you can actually do some cool things with that. So if we have a word that is going to be linked to something linked to something, then maybe in a blog, you would want to add that link right there. So highlight that text and Quickly, you can see that you can also do some basic text editing, make things bold, italic, whatever, or you can make a link right there and you can link this to whatever URL you want. So if you're a blogger, typically you'll throw some backlinks um, to other relevant articles or to other articles of your own, or maybe if you're selling something, you could link to that. Obviously backlinks are very important when you're doing really anything online with a website. So linking around is, is going to be a very common practice of yours. And then when we're done, we can go and click publish right there, or you can actually have a, you know, a, a separate published date right there. Um, so if you want to say I'm publishing it every Thursday morning or something, you can easily do that right there. Um, so we need to publish our site in order to publish this blog. Of course, let's just do that later. Um, but actually let's go back to the editor now. So that's how you'd set up a blog. So after the macros, let's start looking at the settings before we go into actually making the website look good. So the settings right here will be important. They're gonna make your life easier further on down the road as well. So first of all, if you want to publish your site, you could do it right here. It'll also tell you the status of your site or you can publish from the top right as I showed you earlier. We can go to basic information. This is going to be also what I showed you. If you click on the name, it's going to show you the basic information about your site, changing the name, stuff like that. The domain then is going to be something that GoDaddy gives you right away. But once you upgrade your site, which we will do in just one minute, uh, you will actually have your own domain. And of course, it, it's always pretty much essential to have your own domain. I highly recommend it. You want to make sure that it's not just like, you know, Mike O'Brien photography GoDaddy sites .com. It's really unprofessional. If you're trying to get any business out of this, it doesn't look good. Even for like a wedding website, it still kind of looks a little tacky. So I definitely recommend paying so it can be michaelbryanphotography.com. It just, it's just a better look really. So search engine optimization, SEO, you see that term thrown around a lot and it's not really uh, like, we have some basic stuff right here. We can go and start optimizing and use their tools and work through that. Don't do this yet. Wait till you have your website really populated a little bit more and you're ready to publish it. And then you can go through and start making sure you have enough links in there. Make sure, you know, it, overall it's just ready for Google to, you know, crawl and identify your site with as little issue, as few issues as possible. So going back to settings, we can go down to social accounts. This is a big one. Definitely make sure you link up all your social accounts and you'll see them. They should show up on the bottom depending on what theme you have. Um, so your social right there, right now, none of them are linked. But if I go and say like Instagram, I would want to have like Mike O'Brien. 
and if I if I put mine in there, you'll see that suddenly it's not a light gray. It's actually a real link there, and that is linking out to mine. Hopefully, you have more than just one social media, but you get the idea of how this is going to work. So let's click done. It'll kick us back one level here. And then after social accounts, you can go to Google Analytics. So if you're trying to track your website traffic, you can set up Google Analytics. I can show you guys that in another video, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to go in and set up Google Analytics and then come back and paste my tracking ID right there. It's another video, but you get the idea. It, it's pretty easy to do. You're just going to paste your tracking link pretty much. Um, then we can go down to the cookie banner, uh, favicon. That's, a, that's an in, important one right there. So you'll see that on the top if I get out of... Um, this view right here on the top with the GoDaddy sites, they have this little tiny image right there, the little logo, and you want your site to have that as well. Otherwise, it's like kind of just a maybe like an earth picture or something, whatever the internet browser you're using is going to show there. You want to have your logo up there. It's going to look better. It looks cool to have it. So you want to upload an image right here should be your logo. And like I said, it'll show up right next to your site title on the top when somebody goes to your website. So continuing down here, we have site history, we have Google AdSense. If you want to add, if you want to throw advertisements in this, um, or if you want to do any kind of advertising for your site, uh, you can do, you can either add a Facebook pixel, that'll be when you're doing advertisements for people who visit your site. So if somebody goes through, adds something to the cart and they don't quite buy it, or somebody clicks on a certain article of yours, maybe you can hit them with ads later on the Facebook network, and then you can start, you know, really targeting your ads and making more money uh, based on that. But that's that's a story for another day. If you want to know what Facebook Pixel is, I'll put a link down below to a video I made about that. And of course, Google AdSense, you can add, you can throw some ads in here if you want. So you see some websites have like an ad banner on the side or just here and there so you can make some money on your website especially if it's a blog, it's pretty common for people to do that. Um, and then of course you can have your Pinterest meta tag. Um, honestly, I don't have much experience with Pinterest meta tag, so I'm not going to talk about that much, but that's everything in settings right here. So if we go back, um, then really that's everything on the right side. So now what we can do is we can start really editing this site and I'll show you all of the tools you need to start making it look good. Before we continue, a really important thing if you're trying to host your website professionally is to go and upgrade this and view some different plans. So as you can see, they have four different plans right here and they are showing you the price if you're billed annually. That's something to note that you can switch that to monthly billing and you'll see that is a difference of like 20% or something. Um, so we can look at right there, $15 a month versus $8 a month for the basic one. And as you scroll down, you'll see there's lots of different options there. No matter what, they all have the secured, uh, the, SL, the SSL right there, which means that at the top to the left of your domain, they'll have like a little lock icon on Chrome. Uh, and I believe most other browsers show it there as well. And it just means that it is an encrypted connection there. So when people type in their credit card information or their PayPal or their email address on your website, it is encrypted and it's not going to be stolen along the way. Um, or at least it's much safer to do this. You can go down and connect a custom domain with all of them. Obviously, that's like the main purpose of upgrading. Uh, mobile friendly site, you can see that they do most of the same things until you get down here. Uh, and the SEO is a little bit better on the more expensive plans. So they start to have some SEO tools you can run through there. Uh, and then you can have you're limited on how many social media uh, and listing platforms you can have on here unlimited for the other ones only one for the basic one. And as you go down, you'll see that you do have some different limitations with like email marketing. If you want to do that, I typically use MailChimp. That's the one that I would recommend. And I'll link a video down below of our recent MailChimp tutorial. It's just an easier way to do things, manage it all in MailChimp. Um, but you could do it through here as well if you want to. Then as you go down, you really start to see where the other ones like e-commerce, obviously the one on the right there, the $20 per month one, it's called e-commerce. So that's where you get all the e-commerce things. If you're trying to sell online, you're definitely going to be going through that one. And of course, there are many different e-commerce platforms. And again, like I'm not trying to like plug my videos here, but I did actually, we are making more videos on that. So if you guys are new here, you haven't seen that video, go down and click the subscribe button, head over to our channel, and we will be showing more videos about different e-commerce platforms. So if you're trying to make an online store on somewhere else, you can do that instead. Um, or, I mean, since we're already invested into GoDaddy right here, this is also a great one to do that as well. So we can just go and add that to our cart and we can check out and then we will have that. And let's go back to the editor now. Okay, so when we're trying to edit this, there's some things we can and cannot edit. The first thing that we cannot edit is actually the menu on the top right there, because in order to edit that, really, you only have a couple options. You can change the font, which is the theme of the website, or you can actually go into the navigation and reorder them as I showed you earlier on in this video. 
Now, something we can change on the top left there, if we decide that our, our logo right there, we want it to have text right there, or if we don't want to have text right there, we could upload our actual logo. That way you don't have to worry about trying to match fonts and colors and stuff like that. You can simply upload your logo and it'll show up as a picture right there. And by default, this actually should be linked to your home page right there. So if somebody goes to your website, if we go to preview uh, and we click on the top left on your logo, it should definitely be linking back to your home page right there. So if we go around and let's check out like contact us, uh, and then if we go up and click on the logo right there, it should definitely link back to home as it does. Okay, so let's go back to edit right now. And let's keep going through what we're able to edit right here. So in, of course, every single section is going to be slightly different, different sections are going to have different things that you can and cannot edit. So let's cover the basics of what is going to be edited. So right here, we'll see that we do have this big thing right here, the big text in the middle, and you really are not going to be moving this around a whole lot. So we can go in this section, you see the on the right there, when we start editing a single part of a section, it allows us to change a lot of things about the section. So the cover media means like the image in the background, you'll see right there, we can change what that is, we can change the accent of this section. And being that uh, we have a theme for this, it's going to use the same colors that we used in every other section for now. But if you use a different color in the background, you may want to change this right here, or just change your theme colors as well. The alignment probably should be in the center. But for some things, you may want to have it on the left or the right. Uh, and then we can have a background for navigation at the top if our picture makes it hard to look at. So maybe for this picture, white text on that background is a little tricky. So maybe this would look a little bit better. Then as we go down there, site navigation, of course, uh, we can go in and edit that because this is the header section right there. And it just kind of links us over to that. Um, but if we say done, it'll kick us back to that's one thing that's kind of annoying about uh, GoDaddy here is that it doesn't always when you say done, it doesn't bring you back to where you were, it brings you back one step above uh, wherever it thinks you should be going, which which doesn't really make sense to me. So let's go back to editing this right here. So we click on it, it brings us back to the menu on the right side. And as we go down, you can have a promotional banner at the top. Maybe if there's like a sale going on or something, you can add some kind of promotion. Um, so you see right there, it's like free shipping on all orders or something right now. Pretty easy to add that up there. I'm going to turn that off for this website right now. As we go down, you can have your logo, uh, as I talked about earlier. So we can use the text or we can use a, a logo right here. And again, there's different ways you can edit things, you can click on it on the top left, and it'll bring you right here. Or you can just kind of navigate through the right side and get to different sections. So it's nice that things are accessible. Then in this section, we do also have an action button right there. Um, so we will be able to edit that action button, choose what that's able to do. Uh, so it can link to a website URL or a page in your website. So the page you can go down and link to the gallery, uh, the about us contact whatever page you have. And because we only have four pages, that's what's showing up right there. And so if we want this to link to gallery, so you can see photos, and it can bring them to different parts of the page, you can bring them to um, the top of the page is what I'll do right here. But there's different parts of uh, that page as we can check out in a minute. So let's say done right here, and it'll kick us back one level again. Um, and then as we go down, you can see that you do have like a headline right there. As we of course, you can change the text on the right side, or you can actually just click on the text box. But you'll notice that some things, you know, different sections are very specific. So this header right here, we can't add a link to it. So you'd have to go down to the paragraph here if you want to add a link. And it's not actually a paragraph. It's just that one little phrase right there. But you could highlight certain things and add link to that. Um, so if you're trying to link back and forth, you could do that down here, but you can't do it in the header right there. The small drawback of using GoDaddy is that you are a little bit limited with what you're able to do. It's not totally free form as we see with Wix. But considering that, you know, it still is very easy to use, it's actually probably easier to use this. Um, and it's pretty much dummy proof here that you know, it definitely it serves its purpose. And you can always change uh, just a different theme if you want, or you can change a different section. I mean, um, if something is not working the way you want it to, then go down to blog here, and we can edit blog. So if we click on that, it'll bring us over to the right side to the blog there. Um, so you can change the layout of what you like there, you can manage your blog, of course, that brings us back to where we were. And you can also have an external blog feed if you write your blog posts on some other platform that's not this website, you can easily have that uh, as in a carousel right here as well. Um, then as we go down, we have about now this section is interesting, because it has a title at the top, and it has three little sections down here. And of course, it's pretty self explanatory. I think you guys see how what they're doing right here, what how this works. But we can delete this one. And you'll see that it will turn into two then side by side, and they will have equal spacing with the divider between them. 
So if we click the little plus button right there, it'll add another section. We can add another one as well. So if we want to go click plus right there, it'll just uh, really quickly duplicate that and it'll start filling in the area with as many little paragraphs as you need. Um, and of course, you can move these around as well. So left and right, we'll just we'll switch them around. It doesn't look different because it duplicated that. But you get the idea of what we're actually doing here. And then if we actually click on one of these, it'll bring us into the settings on the right side for this section. In this section, again, you start to see similar patterns here at the top. You can change the layout. You can change the alignment of different parts so everything can be left aligned, center aligned, right aligned, whatever you're looking for. You can, have, you can change the title at the top. Again, you cannot, you cannot link that out to anything. But down here, you will be able to link out. So if you go to each individual paragraph, you can't link out the headlines right there, but you can add links within the description as you need to. Or, you know, because you can't link out the little headline there, what you can do is add a button, like an action button. So if you write a short little thing and you say, read more or learn more or something, it is nice that you can go and toggle this little switch here and you'll have an action button right there, like find out more. And it's just nice for, in a website, you want things to flow around very easily so people know where they're navigating to. And it should never be hard to get back to your homepage or to any other page on your website. So buttons are a great way to make a smooth experience on a website right there. So let's say done and continue down, see what the other sections look like. So online appointments, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is through a third party. So if we click on this, it's going to have us get started and you'll be using whatever your online appointments thing is right there. Um, you can book, you can change things about that. Subscribe here. There is a lot of editing you can do with this one. But again, you'll see that you will be able to change like the headline, the description um, and things like that. A thank you message. So after people type in their email and to, you know, sign up for your email list. Uh, they'll be able to, you'll have a little thank you, this was accepted, which is good to have some kind of feedback there to let them know that what they did actually worked and was registered. And then it can, you, right down here, you can create an email. Um, so reach your subscribers with powerful, okay, so emailing is important as well. You want to make sure you're not emailing people from a Gmail. I know I say this in like, pretty much all of my videos that I ever make, but sending someone an email from some Gmail that's like, you know, your middle school email that you made way back when Gmail came out, if it's like, Mike Bobby 53, you know, it's just kind of weird. It's kind of a strange thing to do. So I definitely recommend making an email that's a professional one that would be like uh, maybe information at michaelbryanphotography.com. That'd be a great way to do that if you have that as your domain, of course. So uh, we can go through that in a minute, but let's go down to the bottom here and actually view some different plans. Or sorry, I realized there's one other section I didn't talk about. The footer right here, you'll see that we can change the footer. Uh, something that I definitely recommend getting rid of is the powered by GoDaddy website builder. You can keep that if you really want to support GoDaddy, but typically I would remove that and put something else there or just leave nothing there. It looks a little cleaner, a little more professional. It leaves people guessing as to how you made your website. And they're like, oh, maybe he's really good at coding. And it, it, it erases the possibility of, oh, he just used something really easy like a GoDaddy thing, which not to say it's any less, it still looks great. Um, but I don't know, sometimes it's good to just keep people guessing that maybe you, you did something else. I don't know. Um, then on the bottom left, you can change what that says right there. They just assume it's a copyright for uh, whatever your business name is or what your website name is. You can change that for your business name if it's different than your website name. And then, of course, this brings you down to social navigation if you want to have that down there as well. As you can see up there, we do already have that. So let's say done right here. So once you edit the entire page, go over to pages and sections and don't forget to go and check out your other pages and edit those as well. Don't just publish your site right away. Um, I mean, you can publish your site and you can most likely, unless you share it, mo you're not going to have many visitors right away. But another section to look at here is this one right here. I think this one looks really cool. Contact us. You have a map right there. So you can click on that. Uh, you can actually edit it so you have an address that the map actually looks at. So if you have a physical business, brick and mortar, a place that people can go to buy your stuff or come to your business or whatever, you can put the address right there and the map should zoom in, should be interactive as well. Um, so it's nice that they have that. And then over on the left side, again, pretty self-explanatory with what that's going to do. Uh, you can have right there, send, an, send a message and it'll have your phone number or your email and people will automatically be you know, set up on their phone to call you or it'll go to their email and they will be able to send you a message. So guys, that's everything pretty much that I wanted to show you in this video. Obviously, there is a lot to talk about here and I didn't want to waste your time going into each individual section and every possible way you can configure them. I figured this gives you the basic tool set to go out and explore on your own and start building your website. So the next step, like I said, go down in the link in the description here, 
uh, open that in a new tab, copy and paste it, and then go through this. And you should, you know, come back to this video, go back to different sections if you need to. I'll put timestamps down below, and you can just go through here and start building your professional website. And then the very last thing you do, don't forget to click publish right there. And once we publish, because we upgraded, you can go and choose a domain. There's different ways to get a domain. You can get it from GoDaddy. Honestly, that's what I recommend. It's the easiest way to do it. And they do have, you know, some pretty good prices. But you could also go to Namecheap. They're obviously pretty cheap, as you can see in the name right there. You can go to Google Domains. You can go to, you know, Squarespace, whatever you want. You can buy a domain from pretty much anybody. And you could transfer into this. Or if you have a website somewhere else, you could transfer the domain to this. Or like I said, you can just go and buy it right there. And you'll see right here, we can go and view our website. Of course, I don't have any photos that I could add to this, but you'll see that you do have a nice professional website pretty much instantly right here. And it, using the template alone, it already looks really good just by changing the colors. And you'll be able to go, you know, you can see this on any anywhere in the world. You can go on a desktop, on a mobile device, on an iPad, and it should be looking really good because they do have that modular design that it's really kind of hard to screw it up because you're just filling in information and their template is already kind of optimized for different platforms. You don't have to worry about that being too weird on different devices. The only thing you really worry about is maybe text being too long and being cut off and looking weird, but otherwise, I find that it works really well. That's one of the best things about GoDaddy is how easy it is to just give them information in there and they pretty much do all the site building internally. So guys, that's what I have to say in this video. I hope this helped you. If it did, please remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful. As always, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.